forth when and so on. Right? And uh, those numbers we call them terms. Okay. This is the first term and we call it A with a little one down there. We call it uh, A, not A1, and A -N. not little one, and not AN, but A sub, right? Because it's sub, it's below. It's in what's called the subscript. Okay. If you look on Microsoft Word and there's a little button up at the top and there's a little uh, number that's below a, a, a letter, you, you hover over that and it'll say subscript. Let's take headphones off. Off. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we got the, the first term is called a sub one. So a sub one. The next one's a sub two, of course. A sub three and a sub four. And you just keep it going for as long as you want. The hundredth term, a sub one hundred. Okay, let me just talk about this notation real quick. Uh, we have way out there somewhere, right? Just somewhere down the line. Generally, if we don't call it an x, we call it a sub. And it is the nth term in the sequence. <laughs> Question? Oh, wait. So uh, a, the second A, is that a 2 or a 1? Right? Well, it, I mean, it would have to be a 2, right? Because it's the second. Okay. Okay. One, first one, second one, third one. Oh, but you just want to number the first one. No. No? A first one's A sub 1. Okay. When did we learn about the sub and stuff? Just now. Oh, cool. Um, it was to write the term. Okay. <laughs> Uh, what, what do you think makes more sense, finding the tenth term right now or finding the, like, the equation? Equation. Equation. equation to figure equation out the first. term. So the Kyle is right. Like, this is exactly the same as finding the formula for the, the, the number of seats in a given row in an amphitheater. Like, that was an example of an arithmetic sequence. And here's an example of an arithmetic sequence. Right. You need negative three. What's negative three? Yeah. For the A, it's A, like, for the A's. Now that's what we call, this is something we didn't have time to get to, the common difference. Oh, oh yeah, I remember that. I just put an, because that's the first one. Put an, and equals me the 30, and then like, it's red. A sub a. Yeah. Not an. Well, you know what I mean by it. I'll say it? No, it You have to learn what you mean, you should just say it. A sub 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 A you just need to write a little equation for finding whatever term down the line that you want to find. Plus negative three. Just write plus negative oh, three. No, 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 no. no. I'm trying to figure out, well, no, I figured the pattern out. Negative three. Yeah, plus negative, negative three, three x. x. Okay, so we're starting at negative three. Okay. Plus n um, commas n minus one. Yeah, let's forget about that for a second. You guys. Like, it's great that you read the book and, and look at the formula. You really don't need it, though. This is one where, you know, let, let me show you a, a formula that is complicated and difficult. Um, it's this one. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac Whoa. over 2a. Okay. Real famous formula, it's called the quadratic formula. That one's a bit crazy. We can derive it, and it's not too difficult once we've learned everything we need to learn to, to do that. Um, but in the end, it's like it's just a formula you're going to have to memorize because to derive it takes quite a few steps. And I wouldn't expect you when you need to use it to derive it. That's kind of crazy. Uh, so 
you memorize that formula, but this thing, a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d, you don't need it. Okay? And either you'll convince yourself that you do need it, or you'll convince yourself that you can figure it out. I just said a n, I mean a 10, mm -hmm. and then I just took negative 3 times So let's let's aim for understanding this and actually like inventing it for ourselves. Okay. So let's rather than saying like, oh, I know, and I, and I just I know what the formula is. Let's understand the formula. It's such an understandable formula. Okay. So we're starting at negative three. And from there, how do we get to the next term? You go down three. You go down three, subtract three. Subtract three. And it's just a coincidence that we start with negative three and we go down by negative three. We could have started at five and we could have gone down three from there. Okay. So if I subtract this three right here, just this single three, where's that going to take it? From the first term to which one? Second. 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 Notice we just subtracted one, three. We got to the second term. 1, 3 is subtracted. We're at a sub 2. 1, 3, a sub 2. 1, 3, a sub 2. A sub okay, three. let's subtract another 3. A subtract sub three. 2 3s gets us to where? A sub 2. A sub 3. What? Here's the first term, a sub 3. I need that. Subtract 3, that gets us there. Subtract another 3, that gets us there. That's the third term. Okay. Let's subtract another 3. Where is that? A sub 4. Four. We subtract three threes, subtract three, three threes, and we're at a sub four. four. Right? We always have to, like, we just need one fewer three than the number of the term we're going to. Uh, well, let's just briefly say this gives me a sub four, right? A sub four. Starting with negative three and subtracting three and subtracting three and subtracting three. Negative 3 minus, what's the faster way to do that? Instead of subtracting 3 three times. What? Um, the 3 times, um, time, it would be like negative 3 times 3. Negative 3 times 3. That's what multiplication was invented for, for quickly adding things together. So we want to add 3 negative 3s. So we, sub we multiply by 3. And that takes us to term number four. So let's, uh, let's establish a pattern. If I want to do a sub five, I'm going to do negative three minus three times what? Four. Four. A sub six, negative three minus three times? Five. five. A sub seven, negative three minus three times? Six. Okay, we're noticing that what we multiply negative 3 by, because negative 3, like, that's what we go down by each time, that's the common difference, is always one less than the number of the term you're going to. Right? Why is it like minus 3 minus negative 3 minus 3 up first? Well, because we start with, we start with negative 3. There it is, that's our beginning point. Yeah. And then, just by coincidence, yeah. we go down by 3 from there. Yeah. So if I want to go to the next term, I need to subtract a 3. Oh. Subtract 1, 3 from the first term, and I get to the second term. Oh, I see. So it's just the first term yeah. uh, minus the, what is the number called? The, the common difference. The common difference. Yes. And any time. Yeah, because you're going to do the common difference so many times. Oh, OK. And it depends on which term you're going to. If you're going to the fourth term, you'll go to the common difference 1, 2, 3 times. If you're going to the seventh term, you'll go 6 times. Molly? In the equation, what does the n minus 1 mean? We're getting to it. So we're, hopefully we're noticing this pattern. I'm going to go to a sub 7. I'm going to start with a, the first term, negative 3, and subtract 3 6 times. Minus 3 times 6. One more time, go to a sub 8. Start with the negative 3, that's the first term. Minus 3 times what? 7. 7. 
So the, the number that we multiply the negative three by, the common difference, is always one less than the number of the term that we want to get to. So. Oh, now I understand. Yeah. Oh, and so. Just like what we were doing with the rows of how much steps you had to go up, if you yes. wanted to go to row 24, you took 23 steps. Exactly. And that's so it, number one is still two, true. Sure. It's still what? True. It's still true. Oh, because the minus is one, and then you yeah. don't subtract anything. Yeah, yeah you like, get to how, like yeah. if it was um, only one, mm -hmm. and you, uh, I can just mess up. If it is only one, then you would put a zero. Because it's one less. And negative three plus zero would be negative three, and that would be the first term. Um, right? Uh, so for any term, anywhere down the line, we start with the first term, which is negative three. We subtract three. Right? And just like for the sixth term, we multiply it by five. The seventh term, we multiply by six. Eighth term, we multiply by seven. This number is always one less than the number of the term we're going for. The number of the term we're going for is n. And minus 1 is 1 less than the number of the term we're going for. Uh, that's a great formula. We can also like distribute this negative 3. Negative 3, negative three times n, negative 3n. Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. It just leaves us with negative 3n. Uh, we can just take negative 3, multiply it by 1, raise it 1. Question 2, raise it 2. Question? Yes? How can you just cancel 3 times negative 10? Negative 3 times 10? Yeah, negative 3 times 10. Yes. This, this we haven't gotten to 10 yet. Well, I know, but you're explaining a lot of stuff that, I mean, it's pretty simple. You do this piece of negative 3 times 10. We're not just looking for a sub 10, we're looking for this equation. Mm -hmm. right? That's what it is. Okay. Alright, so we're going to find a sub 10 now. And using our formula, we can go negative 3 times 10, negative 30. Yeah, let's uh, make one up. Oh, wow. Can you go back? Okay, so let me just make one up. Let's say Thank you. that it starts at uh, 5, that's the first term, a sub 1. Uh, and that goes up to 9, for a sub 2, up to 13, for a sub 4. And Don't give anything away, I'll just shout it out. You try this formula 5 plus 4. Let's stop there for a second. That makes sense, right? Right. Yeah. Five plus four. I would take five, and I would add four to it to get to there. But then I saw this. Now let's just use it and show ourselves like that's not quite right. Okay. So if this is the correct formula, we should be able to use it to find any term in the sequence. So let's try to find a sub three. A sub three is good because there it is. We know what it should be. The way the formula works is that the same n that is there goes right there. That's why there's an a sub n. So I'm going to find the third term. I'm putting 3 into the fourth. Let's see what happens. 5 plus 4 times 3. That's what the formula formula says. What do we get? We get 17. 17. That's not right at all. That's not 13. But don't you have to do minus something? Hold on. Where does 17? Does 17 belong in the sequence? Yeah. yeah. Where? Yes. It belongs a 4. A sub 4 is 17. So like I found, yeah. start, in finding, trying to find 3, I accidentally found 4. But that shouldn't be too surprising, because we've been talking about that, how like with the amphitheater and all that kind of stuff, it's 4 and 17. Would it be 1? Could you plug in 1 plus 4? No, but wouldn't you do minus yes. after 5 plus 4 and minus something? N minus 1. I didn't do that. N minus 1. Right. You're going to get hit by a barrage of suggestions. Molly? I got, um, uh, 1 plus 4n, because I had like that right there, but I had um, minus 4. Well, no, 5 plus 4n minus 4. Oh, so and then you I said got 
this isn't working, and then you say, yeah. let's subtract 4. Well, I had the um, 5 plus 4 times n minus 1, uh, and then I got that, and then I got 1 plus 4 n. Okay, so you put a minus 1 there. Mm -hmm. Okay, which is, I think Bridger was saying that, right? You gotta have a minus No, one. I think that was Oliver who said it. Oliver said that? I said minus something, but not Oh, minus that. something. See, if I want a sub three, I don't want to multiply four by three. What am I to multiply four by what? Two. Two, well, if three goes, three's there, and I plug three in there, the parentheses forces me to subtract one from the three, and now it's two. Okay. If I want to go to a sub five, Plug a 5 down there, minus 1, that turns into a 4, now it's 4 times 4. Oh, yeah. It's 4 steps to get to, to figure number 5, or row number 5, or term number 5. Oh, yeah. okay. And if we multiply this out, we would get a sub n is equal to 1 plus 4n, which makes sense too, because if we back up to this term, like row 0, or term 0, a sub 0, then to get to the next term, to the first term, I add on 1, 5. Or sorry, 1, 4. I add on 4 once to get to a sub 1. And so the number of the term now would match this yeah. end because we're starting with 1 instead of 5. I think you said Wait, yeah. why again? Sorry, that was kind of confusing. Okay. So this formula makes sense, right? We're going to start at 5. We're going to add on 4 one less time than this end here. Uh -huh. 4 times that. Three if this is a sub four. Mm -hmm. If I, if I were just to, to distribute this four, I get four plus four n minus four. And five minus four would be one, and so that's what one plus four n. But I can also see that one plus four n works makes sense because I look at the sequence starting from back here at one. Mm -hmm. right? If I start oh. at this term, the zero is term. Yeah. Then to get to the first term, I add four. One time. One time to get to a sub 1, right? It's not off at all. They exactly match up. The number of times I have to move up 4 and the term that it lands me on is the same number. Yeah. Right? Add 4 two times, and I land at this second term. Two fours, a sub 2. They match up perfectly. So that's the thing. Like I want you to think for yourselves rather than just do what somebody told you to do. If, you, if you'd like to back up to a sub 0 and just write your formula from there, like it's going to go up by 4 every time, so I just have to add on n 4s to get to a sub n, whatever that is. Oh, I have to add on 8 4s, starting from here, that's that 8 4s to get to a sub 8 out there. So just uh, 8 times 4 plus 1. Can you do, do this? Could you do like maybe 9 plus 4 and then a hey, sub that. So let's think about it that way. A sub n equals, let's start at 9 instead of 5, or starting at 1, plus 4, and then minus 2. Because now we only need to take, we need to take two fewer steps oh. than the number of the term. Okay. Like minus 2. Because right? if I wanted to start at 9 and I want to get up to a sub 4, I want to get to a sub 4, but I only want to add <laughs> on 1, 2, 4. So that's 2 less. So why does it keep the, like, 9? Nine plus four, I mean four times five minus two. So it'd be like, it'd be, so you'd be finding number three for it? If you plug a five in here? Yeah. Well, that's five you're plugging in for n. n is five, so n is five, so you're finding the fifth term. Well, I thought we weren't finding the fifth because we, we avoided. I'm just going off of what you said in that period. You said, what if we put five there? Yeah. That would mean that we're finding the fifth term because n is five. Uh -huh. let's, let's see what happens. Nine plus four times, you said five minus two. Nine plus four times three. Nine plus 12, 21. Next term, a sub five, 21. Because we're starting at 9, look what we're doing. We're adding 4 times 3. We're adding 4, 4 again, 4, 3 times, 3 times 4. I can go up 4, 4, 4, or I can go from 9 and add 12, right? 4 times 3. Good. OK, so like whatever term it is, if you're using the, main, the third term, you always use one number you wrote. Or like minus two. I want to understand.
understand your question. What was your question exactly? Okay, so you're doing minus two because it's nine. So if it was like 13, it would be minus three then? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so if I started at 13, 13 plus four times now n minus three because we're already on the third term. Yeah. We don't need to take those three steps. Right? Like they've already been taken, so we just need to take the additional however many it is. Yeah. This formula is not fantastic because it gets a little weird when you, if you were starting at a sub two and you want to find a sub one, and then this becomes negative, it still works. It's not wrong. Or but so, it's just a but for weird. thirteen, would it be subscript, subscript two? Thirteen. Thirteen is a sub three. Oh shit! Then why wouldn't nine be one? Because it's a sub 2, so that means that 2. And that is a sub 2, we subtract 2. Then why do you do subtract 2 for 13? Don't know that we are. Where are you seeing that out? Oh, wait, no, it's your option. We need it for subscript B3 for 13. Oh, which one? The subscript is 3 for 13. Okay. Remember, that's fine. Are there any copies or wouldn't you minus? No, you minus three. If I were to write a formula starting from thirteen, it would look like, like a sub n equals thirteen plus four plus four, four times n minus three. Okay. Because you're on subscript. Thank you. So if I wanted to get to a sub uh, six, oh, that looks like a six, but it's supposed to be a five. If I was trying to get to a sub five, well, I wouldn't want to put five into this. You know, like four times five. I'm going to do 4 times 2 because I only need to go up 2 more. So 5 minus 3 would give me 2. Bridger? So would you want to start from the equation on a sub 0 or a sub 1? Because That's just kind of like individual taste. It, if, if every one of these was distributed mm -hmm. and simplified, they'd all come out to look like 1 plus 4n. Right? This one did. This one would. You'd get 4n minus 8. Right? Mm -hmm. Minus 8 from 9, you get? One plus four n. Okay. We get this one. We get thirteen minus twelve when we distribute the four to the negative three. One plus four n. So they're all equivalent to this. And if you were to t carry out the distribution, you'd wind up with this. Or you could just have this because you're the kind of person who just likes to back up to a sub zero anyway and work from there. Okay. And also, if so, if the pattern was like plus three or minus three, you'd start with like whatever number the a sub one or just any of those are on, you put that, then minus or plus three, and then put it times n minus that number. Which number, three, because it goes up by three? Yeah. No. No, 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 no. If you did plus three and then parent, not parent, well, yeah, parentheses n minus, and then if you're on a uh, two, maybe, minus two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. it out. So if we started at 7 and that went up to uh, 13, uh, to 19, and so on. It's going up by 6. Going up by 6. Right. So if I were to just follow my common sense, I would start at 7 and I would just keep adding 6 until I got wherever I was trying to get to. Right? A sub 1, A sub 2, A sub 3, A sub whatever, A sub n. So I'd start at 7, I would add on 6, and add on 6, and add on 6, and add on 6, as many times as I need. Okay. And minus 1. And minus 1, because I'm on the first term. I don't need that, like, I don't count that as a, as a, a step. I only need to take one less step than, you know, 3. I only need to add two 6s to get to a sub 3. So whatever this guy is, right, I always subtract 1 from it, <coughs> multiply by 6, and add it to 7. And if I wanted to clean this up a little bit, I could get 7 plus 6n minus 6. a sub n equals 7 minus 6 is 1. 1 plus 6n. So if at least, hopefully by now, if, if you we rely on the formula. You know why this says a sub 1, because we're starting at the first term. Why we put d here? Because we're going to go up this many, you know, we're going to go up by 6 a bunch of different times. 
and n minus 1 because of the number of steps to get there, just like the amphitheater example, it's always one less than the row number or the term number. Right. Sense? Oh. Um, so, how do you know which subscript is the first one? Just the first one is the list? No. Yeah, if they, if, you just give, if they gave you a list of numbers and they didn't say anything, then you just assume the first one is a sub 1. And then you can go like, take the collision number that goes up 5. The oh, common difference? Yeah, you can do that and just take that minus it and that subscript is 0. Right. Okay. Yeah. And it, you know, if that thing is negative, then you would minus okay. a negative, which would be adding and going up. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Um, oh, we have uh, the movie theater question. Uh, so there's a movie, and in its first week, its first week, it makes one hundred million dollars, and then its next week it makes twenty million dollars less than that. So how many million dollars is that? Eighty, 80. 80 million dollars. And the week after that it makes sixty, 60 million dollars. So we just have another arithmetic sequence. Oh, I get this. This goes down by twenty million. Twenty million. Down by 20 million again. So the common difference is? 20. 20. Negative 20. Negative 20 million. Yeah. Common difference is negative 20, or negative 20 million, however you're thinking about it. All right. So here's our first term, 100. If I want to get down the line you know, to another term in the sequence, I'm going to have to subtract 20. But if I want to get down any further than the next term, I'm going to have to subtract 20 a bunch of times. That's seven, right? N minus. N minus 1, because I'm starting at the first term. So a sub n is equal to 100 minus 20, but one less time than whatever this number is. Or I can distribute this negative 20 and get a sub n equals 100 minus 20n plus 20, and get a sub n equals 120 minus 20n. If you started on a sub 2, would you do 80 minus 20 parentheses and minus 2? You would. Okay. I get it. Oh. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Tyler? Wait, so. Good question. How Because it distributed the negative 20 to the n, you got negative 20 n, and negative 20 times negative 1 is positive 20. Okay. So it just distributed that negative 20 into the parentheses. Is this our first problem or a second? This was a second. This was a, this was a Make number problem. 39. Number 39. The other one was another arithmetic sequence that. Uh, it's the exact same thing. Yeah. The common difference was one, and the beginning term was something, 10. 